morning for the reading of our scripture this morning. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through 18. Then Hannah rose after eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She greatly distressed, prayed to the Lord, and wept bitterly. She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and a razor shall never come on his head. Now it came about as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli was watching her mouth. As for Hannah, she was speaking in her heart, only her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. Then Eli said to her, how long will you make yourself drunk? Put away your wine from you. But Hannah replied, no, my Lord, I am a woman oppressed in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider, do not consider your maidservant as a worthless woman, for I have spoken until now out of my great concern and provocation. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and may the Lord of Israel grant your petition that you have asked of him. She said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went out of the way and ate, and she was no longer sad. This is the word of the Lord. And you may be seated. Good morning, New Springs. Good morning. They knew I'm Puerto Rican. They're like, he doesn't need a mic. He's loud. I'm going to say it one time. Good morning, New Springs. Morning. Happy Mother's Day. Feliz de las Madres. To all the mothers, we give God thanks uh, for all you. Before we dive into God's word, as always, I'm just uh, honored and, and truly blessed to share God's word. So let's go ahead and pray and give God thanks for the word that has been read. Father God, we come before your presence as always, depending on you, understanding that what we need is more of you and less of us. I pray that this morning that the mothers are here and families are here, that we can hear your word and understand that you are faithful and true. I ask, Lord, that you may extend your hand and touch my lips and put your words, the words that edify, not my opinion, but what changes us, and that we can hear the gospel and we can hear Jesus being spoken today. Always trusting in you because you are faithful. We give you thanks for what you did yesterday, for what you're doing today, and for what you're going to do. In the name of King Jesus, amen and amen. So it's a familiar story that we know. Some may know, some may not know of the story of Hannah. It is amazing. There are a few things that we actually do see that's happening in this chapter and in chapter two. We see that God hears our prayers. And at the same time, not only that God hears our prayers, it, in the same way we can say that God sees your affliction, God sees your suffering, God sees what's going on in you. It's funny because last week I came to church and I had a sling on for my arm, right? Three weeks ago, and I know I was talking to Ryan about this because I said the story like a hundred times. So, so he said, just give them the video of how you fell because my wife recorded it. So let's turn attention real quick to the video of how I felt. I'm just joking. That would have been awesome, though. That would have been awesome. Everyone's like. <laughs> so if you don't see me lifting up my right hand, it's because I fractured my scapula. So no pickleball for me. Oh, no. Anyways. <laughs> but I had a sling on, and everyone who came to church, they saw my sling, and they asked me, right, Danny, what happened? Walked to someone else. Danny, what happened? Danny, what happened? And thank God my wife actually did record the video. We could talk about it later on. She kept on filming after I fell. Anyways. But it's something that you could have seen physically. And I had to repeat the story over and over and over and over. So it's easy to see when someone is going through something. But how many things are you going in through your life that are not visible that no one sees. Maybe you don't want to share. Maybe you don't want to have anyone know. Maybe you don't know how much your suffering actually is. But it's amazing that God sees and he hears your prayer. Another thing that we see in this chapter and the next chapter along, we see that God answers prayers, which is encouraging of itself. And lastly, what we see in which we will be talking about the majority of the sermon or our talk today is trusting in God. 
which I think it's very, very easy to say to trust in God, to actually trust in God. As we read scripture, we've, we were going through the book of Genesis, and now we're going to go through the book of Acts. We've been going through the book of Romans on Wednesday. And what I love about scripture is that mankind hasn't really changed that much. So, you know, you're just thousands of years, hundreds. Mankind has not really changed that much. I mean, I, I laugh because when I look at scripture, I tend to look at scripture like, you know, like, how it sounds in my head sometimes. And like, there's a woman sobbing. And the first thing, the priest is like, obviously this room is drunk, you know? <laughs> he should not be a pastor of his first, instead of saying, hey, are you okay? Clearly she's drunk from wine. Lady, stop crying, stop drinking. But it's funny because there are so many things. And, and what we see nowadays, and I'm clearly not a mom, as you guys can see, but I'm not a mom, but shout out to my, my wife. She's an amazing mother. She really is, okay? I know some wives think they have an extra kid in their husbands. Not the case with me, hopefully. But anyways. So Robin read and she was talking about how Hannah, uh, she, she, she did not eat and they were having these feasts. And I, I love the point of view of the men in the beginning because men, what men try to do sometimes, we try to fix stuff. Right? Instead of like, understanding or just leaning our ear in and saying, all right, babe, we just try to fix it. Like, well, did you think of not doing that instead of giving that lovely, you know? But that's our title sometimes. We want to fix things. And in the earlier the chapter 1, we see in verse 2, it says that he had two wives. I love that Pastor Gavin always says it's just because in the Scripture doesn't mean, men, you have to have two wives. I don't know if I have to make a disclaimer, but just in case. I'm not, it's one wife, one wife, just one wife. He had two wives. Hannah was one of them, and obviously, as we were reading, Hannah could not have kids. And I love the Old Testament, too, because it's great with these, these names. They're just not, it's not Jimmy or Bob. It's Elkanah, okay, which is hard. And then Panea, and in my mind, say, Danny, don't say Panera. It's Panea, Panera. Oh, man, it's going to come out. And what's interesting is that Hannah had a, a, a specific a situation that was going on because she had something that was afflicting her inside, but it was also visible. And that culture was very important. Men were known by wealth and on their land, not just how much money they had. And, and, and women, their honor and joy, which is still today is having children, is something beautiful. She could not have that. The worst of it is that if you look at, at verse 2 and 3, she had a rival. So not only is that she's going through this uh, personally, but Panera, Panera, I did say Panera. <laughs> Broccoli cheddar soup, come on. Too much sodium. Anyways, Panera, her rival, as the scripture says here, would mock her, would make fun of her. So not only is this happening internally, but then you have someone on the outside repeatedly telling you, you can't do this. You know, where's God? I'm just, you know, I'm kind of ad-libbing. I don't know what necessarily what she was saying. I'm assuming she was saying these things to hurt her and to put her down. We can relate to this in somewhat, you know, we can be going through something. And a lot of times we're going through something and we pray to God and we maybe tell ourselves, does God hear my call? Does he care. And there are always people in your life who are going to put you down or say something negative, or maybe it's sarcastic. Oh, I didn't mean it, but they said it in a sarcastic way and they did mean it. We see stories in the scripture like the blind man in John chapter 9, which is a very amazing story. There's a man who's blind and because of the custom as well back then, if someone was born blind or they had some type of sickness, it's because this person either sinned or his parents or his family sinned. So the disciples asked Jesus a question, who sinned so that man could be blind? We go through stuff like that. God, what did I do? I know I need you. If, if you're like old school Calvinist, like I'm a regenerate, I need, you know, I don't deserve, you know, your love. I'm saved by grace. And you see Jesus tell the disciples, it's not that he sinned or his parents did, although they were sinners. He says that he's blind so that Jesus can glorify himself. In that man's life. It sounds great because we know the ending. We know the ending of this story. But sometimes we're going through something specific right now. That we do not know the ending. And maybe like Hannah you're crying out to God. 
in affliction and suffering and saying, God, I need this. I need you. The boldness of Hannah is what I love. There is a boldness to moms. I, I do love that about moms. There's a big difference between when a child falls, how the father responds, and how a mom's response is. Like when a child falls, a dad might look at the kid and say, really, again? <sighs> you know, or they don't cry. A mom might grab the kid and go, bad floor, blames the floor instead of, you know, no, bad floor, don't do that floor. And then, you know, very different responses. But what you see here is that Hannah prays to God. And not only does she pray to God, then she vows to the Lord. If you answer my prayer, I will give my son for the rest of his life. This guy, had he didn't decide this. The mom made the decision for him. Jeez, just like a mom. You're going to go here because I said so. Anyway, so she's telling the Lord, if you give me a child, if you give me a son, I will dedicate him. They rose early in the morning and they worshiped before the Lord. And they went back to the house. It says, and Elkanah and Hannah, his wife, right? They went back. It says, the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name. said, I have asked for him from the Lord. Shout out to Samuel. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Samuel. Sorry. God remembered her. So we talk about that God hears our prayers and God hears our prayers and he's there. He sees our affliction. And sometimes we're shocked that not only that God hears our prayer, we can get that far to God here. And then when God answers like, whoa, God actually answered my prayer. What do I do now? God answered my prayer. It's easy to say, hey, Lord, if you do this, I'm going to do this. How many of us here in this church have made a promise like that to God? I think that's why it's very important in, in the scripture, like Ecclesiastics, where it tells us to come and not come to offer, but to come to receive because we make these false promises. It's better not to make a promise than make a promise and break the promises. We're prone to do these things that falls on me as well. So now God actually gives her a son. And her vow to God is, if you give me your uh, son, I'm going to give him to you. Man, that is hard. I'm going to be honest. That is extremely hard. We sing these things. We say we trust in God. Actions speak a lot of the words. What we actually see is that later on, after she has Samuel. Verse 20 says, 21 says, they went up to offer to the Lord yearly sacrifice to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up for she said to her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him so that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and dwell there forever. That is intense. How many moms here remember dropping their kids off to kindergarten for the first day? Ah, they're crying, oh, what go? You're like, it's and then the teacher's going to, it's okay, mom. Just come back. If you were one of those moms who were like, bye, you know. <laughs> Which it, brought, it brings me back to the story of when I got hurt. There was two responses in this church. Pastor Gavin, we've got to pray for these people. There was two responses like, oh, my goodness, how long is your healing going to be? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. And then other people were like, did you win the race? So there was two responses. So we got to pray for these moms. I'm just saying, it was moms who said, anyways, God loves them, you know. I don't know if you're a Hannah or not, but we'll see about that later after the sermon. But in dwell there forever. I mean, we can relate to certain things like this and understand that our kids do not belong to us, that they're lent to us, that God has given us. So that in our job as parents is to instruct in them the ways of the Lord, to be there. I think one of the scariest things for parents and for moms is not being there to protect their kids. It's hard. And to just relinquish and, and let me tell you this, priest Eli, he had some bad kids. You, you know how I know he had bad kids? It, it, look at what the Bible says about his kids. It says, this is so great. Ch chapter 2, verse 12. Just, I know we're going over, but this is great. It says, now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. Uh, period. And that is a period. So I'm going to leave my son with you. Were your sons that are worthless men? That they were stealing, they were sleeping with. This is all in the Bible. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know why people are trying to watch Netflix. There's a lot of drama going on here. 
Amen. So we see that Hannah does go. And you see in verse 26, she says, Oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my, pet my petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. She gives up her son. It's crazy on how so many, so many similarities and how references that we can kind of get the same, as the kids would say, the same vibe. Yeah, I had to be hip real quick. Right? You get the same thing of like Mary. Mary has a song, Pastor Gavin read. Now we hear that after Hannah gives up her son, as she promised, because God fulfilled his promise, we see that she prays. It's an amazing prayer. She says in chapter 2, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is, is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice, rejoice in your salvation. Verse 2 says, there is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighties are broken, but the feeble bind is on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out of bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to shell and rises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash if he, to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces against them. He will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. We look at scripture and we look at men like Moses and David and men like Samuel and all these. And we understand it's a foreshadowing of what we actually need. Jesus. And it's not to say that not only that God hear Hannah's prayer and God answered Hannah's prayer and Anna honored the vow she made to God, to God. And what we see later on is that Samuel actually becomes a big deal in Israel. He becomes a prophet. It's the man who was talking between God and the people. He was involved with Saul, King Saul. He was involved with King David. This is a man who God has you know, kept, he dedicated as a young man in the temple. The scriptures even tell us that God called out to him and he heard God's voice and not even the priests heard God's voice. So I, I say this because it's important as well, because what we can do is take a scripture like this and then turn it for ourselves and say, okay, God, I have a prayer and God's going to have to answer my prayer in the way I've asked it. And we can use this and it'd be great. And we'd all clap and cry. Which is, I'm not saying it's for the truth, but what we see in Scripture that God did hear Anna's prayer. And we do see that God closed Anna's womb, as Scripture teaches us here. And he opened up her womb. It's to say that when we pray, we should pray as Christ taught us to pray. That our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. God's will. I don't say this very lightly because I know we all go through things. Ultimately, we pray, and they may look to pastors, and you may look to Pastor Gavin, you may look to, to Pastor Joe, you might look to someone, and you say, hey, I need this prayer, and, and we will pray and believe in God. Ultimately, we have to finish our prayer and say, if it's the Lord's will. I don't mean to bring it down 
I want you to encourage that because that lets us if God is sovereign, which means he's in control, we can trust in him even though that we fail. And I do want to say that even if God promises, you know how many times we've made a promise to God and we've broken the promise and God is so faithful, he still keeps his promise? I've said this story before. We went to Disney, right? And we bought ice cream. Huge mistake. It's like $10 for an ice cream bar, right? I don't know what's going on here. You sure you want ice cream? You're not lactose intolerant? Are you sure? It's got preservative. The government's trying to kill us. No, I don't say, Okay. And we went one on those, 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 uh, those uh, Disney holiday deals. They used to be deals. Like if you're a Florida resident, you could go for three days. It made sense years ago. Now it's like, that's, I don't know what you're trying to do. That doesn't make sense. But the family, oh, it does make sense. Okay, but it doesn't. Okay. So we went to one of the days, and I've said this story before. Tiffany wanted an ice cream. I got her ice cream. Isabel wanted her ice cream. We got her ice cream. Then we had some cousins there, and I bought her ice cream. The lady was like $46. I looked at my wife. I'm like, we're not going to eat any ice cream, right? We're going to break off an ear for each of other. Okay, that's what we're going to do. 40 some dollars for ice cream. And anyways, I, I say this story, and it's, it's hot over there. My daughter went to eat the ice cream, and it fell on the ground, and it splattered, and Florida heat melted right away. There wasn't a five-second rule. You just picked up the stick, and you're like, oh, man. What do I do, Lord? Do I do the Puerto Rican thing and find a chancla and whoosh? You know, is that what I do? I didn't. I didn't. She, and she tried to make me feel better. It's okay, Dad. I didn't want one anyway. And I'm like, oh, oh. I don't know what hurts more. <laughs> the next day, we went to another park because it was part of that family discount. <sighs> and that day, same thing too. She goes, they were like, we want ice cream. And I remember what happened the day before. Being a good dad, you know, trying to be a good dad. I bought her the ice cream and she ate it. I didn't yell at her. I didn't hand her the ice cream like, now don't drop this one like you did yesterday. I didn't bite the ear off. And this is the 10%, you know, <laughs> that you got to give to the Lord. I gave her the, the ice cream. And I say that because I'm just a man. I'm not perfect. A lot of times God gives us something. We drop it and make a mess. And when we ask God again, we think that God's going to say no, yet God receives us and gives us grace and mercy. This is the God we serve. He's a good father. What encourages me about this story is that you see that she trusted in the Lord. She was still very, 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 very involved in Samuel's life. It's not to say that she was not involved in Samuel's life. We see in chapter 2, verses 18 through 21, that she would go and do sacrifices, and then she would take the clothes for Samuel, just like a mom. Here's some clothes, you know. Got to love it, you know. Moms, no matter how old you are in a Latin household, every Christmas you got undershirts and underwears and socks. Just in case, you can never have too much. But you see in chapter 2, verse 18 and 21, you see that God then blesses Hannah again, gives her three more sons and two more daughters. If we remember anything from today, if we can remember what has been said, and even I, I didn't even talk with Kira, the worship band, about trusting in God, and all the songs had to do about trusting in God. It's like God is trying to tell us something. Hey, trust in me. I'm better. Like, I didn't tell them this. And I'm not that cool with slides. And it said, I sought to the Lord. He will never fail. I'm not going to sing because I don't want to take anyone's position on the altar. I'm just saying. Thank you, my lad. <laughs> it's very simple. Sometimes we try to overcomplicate things, and it's very simple. God hears our suffering. God answers, and we should trust in God. And in God's time, he glorifies himself. And this is an example that we see a woman who was in anguish and suffering and in her affliction, God heard her, even though she was being mocked by someone next to her, although her husband didn't really understand, he tried to offer help. He's, he's even told her, am I not worth 10 sons? He would even give her more gifts to make her feel better. But this teaches us that God does see you. God does hear you. God does answer. And in God's time, he will glorify himself. I know it's Mother's Day. I'm not going to be too long because I know the moms are just dying to go home to cook and clean. And uh, I'll finish with this on a story that 
you do see God's sovereignty in hand. And I know for some of us, it's a little hard this time of year for those who have lost their mothers. A year and a half ago, my mom passed away. I've said this story many times. For those who know, my parents were pastors here in South Florida in Oakland Park. Oakland Park? For 23 years, my mother as well could not have children. And by God's grace, he gave her three children. I'm the youngest of the three. I'm supposed to be the mama's boy, but my brother took that role. <laughs> He's the oldest. Sometimes it works out that way. And I said a few months ago that there was a period of time being raised in church that I was rebellious. And I didn't want to know about God. I didn't want to do this. And, 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 and my mom, being my mother, a woman of prayer, a woman of faith, she never rejected me. She would say her mom things that moms would do, but she'd be the first one to be like, do you want something to eat? Come inside. And she would see what I was doing that didn't glorify God. And then just like Hannah, there was people around her reminding her, wait, weren't you weren't supposed to have kids? And he's the pastor's kid. Why is he acting that way? Didn't God give you a promise? And as a mother, I can not imagine how hurtful that is. And she was persistent. She prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then, as I said before, at the age of 19, where Christ opened my eyes and I was able to serve Lord anytime I did anything for God, she was always there. If I went to a service, if I did something, she was always praying for me. And I remember asking, Mom, how did you do it when I was acting a fool? I must have broken your heart. I remember asking her this, and she tells me, Danny, I didn't believe my eyes, and I didn't believe my ears. I believed in God. So if we can take anything from the story, from Scripture, and the wisdom of an amazing Puerto Rican mother, don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your ears. Believe and trust in God. And in his time, he will glorify himself. This is the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for your faithfulness. We give you thanks for being sovereign and in control. That there is none like you. I give you thanks for all the mothers who are here. I ask you, Lord, to continue to give them the strength so they can continue to edify their homes and pray for the kids like mothers pray, which is an amazing prayer. I pray for this church that we can continue to shine the light of Jesus Christ to show not just Coral Springs, but the world that what sustains us and what we need and what is true is Jesus. And we always give you thanks because we understand if you said it in your time, it will come to pass. We pray these things in the name of King Jesus. Amen. Amen.